Virgil Lewis has been very influential in, party, in the part of growing youth soccer in the United States for more than three decades as both a coach and an administrator. And many of those close to Lewis will say that his endless pursuit to promote the game is motivated by his immense love of soccer and all that it offers. He served as president of USU Soccer from 1996 to 2000, and he helped the organization grow while acquiring several major sponsorships. And after all the years of working as an administrator and coach, Lewis has never lost his love for the game. His own words explain his connection with soccer best as he wrote, I could never give back what I've received from the game. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure to introduce Virgil Lewis. Never met a microphone I didn't like. Many of you know that. But all the best words have been taken, but let me repeat a few of those. The big thing is family. And I've heard it in so many ways this evening, and it's so wonderful to still hear those words. It's parents volunteering to have their kids out on the fields, to work with those children, to watch them play, it's having all kids able to play this game. Our top soccer um, uh, individuals, God bless you for doing that. You're, you're truly wonderful, and it's, and it's great that we have all of that enthusiasm and excitement that's still in this room. I've been gone for 10 years. Oh, by the way, I used to give a car out to the volunteer of the year. What happened? Um, <laughs> Just, just saying, just saying. It's great to see that, that same level of enthusiasm. And it's, and it's great to see all of you, my, many of my old friends uh, here, older, much older, um, but, but still friends. Um, but the family goes beyond just our children. And I want to say thanks to, to two of my children. Um, Adrian, my daughter, who's, who was a player and also served as a uh, committee member for this organization, is here with her son, my grandson, Wesley, who started soccer this year as a five-year-old and, and loving the game, and he's, he's held in like a real trooper um, for, for uh, this long this evening. So, Wesley, uh, Adrian, thank you for being here. It's, it's wonderful. And that family expands out, it extends out to, to all of the people who are involved in this sport. It ex extends to, to those professional coaches and those recreational coaches and the coaches that we've homegrown and the coaches that have seen fit to come here and help us with our program. We need to support those coaches. We need to support the players that they work with. Um, and we also need to truly Truly, as, as, as someone who, who made it a, a, a very important part of my, my program to, to work with sponsors and, and to ensure that they, they were able to benefit from their relationship with us, it's important to continue that relationship. They're part of the family. They're a very important part of our family. So as John went through the... The, the group of, of sponsors that we, we had uh, tonight um, and, and have with USU Soccer, make sure you're, you're, you're supporting them, not just at, at the annual meeting, at the, at the vendor show, but also when you're out there and you're purchasing product, purchase our sponsor's product. I mean that, it's, it's, it's very important. And I have a story, I have stories about a lot of people out in this room, but I have a story that I wanted to share with, with Connie, and I couldn't wait, um, told, told her about it anyway already. But um, when, when I was uh, serving overseas, I was having a very difficult time. One of the things that I was doing was working with women and children that were in harm's way, um, many of them being trafficked uh, throughout the Middle East. 
and I needed the help of the uh, Chief Justice of the Iraqi Supreme Court, Justice Midhat. And I had a standing meeting with him every Tuesday night. But I would go there, and he would sit there stone-faced, and my, my interpreter would say something, and he would say something to the interpreter, and the interpreter would tell me, and I said, this isn't working. This just isn't, I am not getting anywhere. So I went early the next week, and I kind of walked around the grounds in the, in the green zone where he was, and I saw his grandson, much the same age as Wesley is, kicking a ball around, and it was a half-flat ball. And I thought, okay, this, this may be an entry. So the next time I went over, I didn't go to see the Chief Justice right away. I went to see the grandson. And I had a brand new Adidas ball. I know we don't, is that, is that okay to say that? Um, <laughs> had a brand new Adidas ball. And, and I had a fistful, because that's all I had with me in Iraq, of sport pins. From, I, I can't tell you of all of your associations that are now being worn by players in Iraq. You know, you, your, your states are well represented. Your regions are well represented over there, I promise, because there were a lot more doors that I wanted to get open. And, and so I sent home to, to my wife, Deborah, who has always been a great supporter but thought I was crazy. I don't need anything other than more body armor and a lot of sport pins. You know, go through, go, through the, go through my stuff and send me all the pins that, that I have. And, and they were marvelous. Connie, John, you wouldn't, you wouldn't believe um, how the meetings went with the Chief Justice after that. As, as his grandson's shirt got heavier and heavier with pins. So, thank you for that. I also want to thank all of you for the joy that soccer has brought to me and I wanted to share that story because it isn't just local it isn't just in your in in your hometown or in your region or even in the United States as I was over there I, I came across an orphanage that was in dire need of a lot of support and I was able to provide a lot of support because we had funding to, to do certain things, but we didn't have funding to really get something personal built up, some personal trust. And so I decided early on that what I wanted to do with that orphanage, I wanted to have those, those kids who I found out were playing soccer come to the embassy and play on a real soccer pitch. It would be the first time in their life that they would see that. So I contacted Evelyn, and I contacted USU Soccer. Matt Moran was, was here, and, and graciously, I received a kit for each of those players. And as you can see in the, in the I never should have told Pam Koppel all this stuff, uh, but as you can see in the, in the write-up, I, I had this, this, uh, th this clinic set up for an outdoor pitch because it was the only grass in all of the Middle East um, and, and they were going to get to play on real grass. But the morning of the clinic, you all have problems, right? When you're putting on a, a clinic or a, or, or, a, or a tournament, there's always some hitch. Well, mine was I was laying there, I'd, 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 I'd gotten up early. And I was laying still in bed, and I was thinking about the things that I needed to, to line up, including the transportation with a little bit of security, which in this case was an Apache helicopter that would follow their bus. And the first rocket came over. <laughs> and five more hit right after that. And so it wasn't that, that it was kind of like the rockets were in the area. When I went out and looked at the pitch, most of the grass was gone. Uh, so we went inside at the gymnasium, and it was just an absolutely phenomenal clinic. These kids loved it. The ambassador was there. He doesn't play very well, but he, he did get out there uh, with, the, with the kids, and they had a great time. And it was even better afterwards because we had all of the pizza that, that uh, they, they could eat, as well as ice cream, which they couldn't get because they just didn't have enough electricity. 
So that's a, a story I share with you as, as part of what you've allowed me to do by learning this game at the level um, that, that I've been able to, to, to learn it. It's, it's a phenomenal experience to be here with, with the fellow inductees, John and Connie, wonderful people. Bob Gansler, if he was here tonight, I'd, I'd, I'd be up here hugging him because he is certainly a mentor of mine as well. I, I don't deserve coach in, in, in my title when, when he's on the same program. He's, he's just a phenomenal fellow, and, and I wish him always the very best. Tom Fleck, just no, no doubt about it. And, and so many more. I could think so many people, it, it, it sounded like the Oscars. I'm not going to do that. But, um, you know, Pam Koppel and, and, and John, I mean, we, we, Dr. Bob somewhere back there in the back, um, and, 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 and Roy, all of these people that, that have just done so much for this game. You're all my family, and it's just so wonderful to come back and to be able to say that. And, and I know that many of you are probably napping now, and that's okay, because I'm still, I've got a microphone, and what, what more can I ask for, you know? And I just wanna, I wanna share this with all of you, and that's why I'm giving you these stories. These are heartfelt stories. These are stories of what soccer has done. But I wanna share one more with you. I'm, I'm standing on a field a pitch and and we have some players out there that are that are training and and uh, two gentlemen walk up I forgot to tell you it's it, it, it's in Portugal and and two gentlemen walk up and they come over to me um, and they say you know we would we know uh, coach Reese and and we'd like to uh, we'd like to talk with him and and I said I said, fine, um, Eusebio, uh, just f fantastic, the people that you can run into in, in, in Portugal, uh, Eusebio and Tony Samoas. And when the kids got a chance to talk with these guys and, and see what soccer meant to them as professional players, it truly made, made a huge difference. And they, they stayed for over an hour and just talked with the kids and took pictures. And, and for those of you who, who don't necessarily know um, the, the, the history of, of Eusebio, he, he played in, 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 a, in a World Cup match in 1966. He, he started the, the match, uh, he started the, the tournament uh, by scoring two goals against Brazil. His buddy, Tony Samoa, scored another one for a 3-1 victory against Brazil in the opener um, for the 66 World Cup. The game against Korea, uh, Brazil, or, uh, Portugal were down 3-0, uh, and, and with a 3-0 lead in a World Cup game, it seemed like it was over. Eusebio scored four goals, and, and the victory was, was, um, was Portugal's. So that's the kind of people that, that you, with what you've done at, at, in, in, your, in your associations, have allowed our players to associate with as they have continued to develop. And what I'm hearing is, from, from the people that are receiving awards, it was their parents that got them started and now they're giving back. And what I'm gonna ask all of you is just to continue giving back, give back, and, and continue watching this great, get, great game grow. It's, 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 it's so worth it. Thank you so very much.